okay so in this lecture we are going to define uh, these uh, quantities uh, first is uh, multiplicative inverse unit in a ring and unity and division ring in field so let us first uh, uh, understand what is the multiplicative inverse right so if you have uh, if you take an element a which is uh, not equal to zero and if you can find a b in the ring such that uh, a into b turns out to be what turns out to be one now what is this one this one is a unity of the ring which we have already defined in the previous lecture so unity is already defined in the previous lecture okay so if you can find this b then this b will be called as what multiplicative inverse of a the second thing is uh, this is a new terminology for us now what is a unit in a ring if uh, if an element has multiplicative inverse okay if i have a element in ring and if a has multiplicative inverse then a is called as unit okay so if you if you if in a uh, ring so let me just take one simple example okay what is an example if you take uh, z as a ring and if you take a is equal to 2 can you find uh, multiplicative inverse of uh, a so can i find the multiplicative inverse of 2 what is 2 into something is equal to 1 so you see you cannot find such an element right so this means that 2 has no multiplicative inverse in this case we say that 2 is not a unit in what in the ring in the ring z right so if what are the then what are the units in z what what elements have uh, inverses uh, in z you see that 1 into 1 can be 1 and minus 1 into minus 1 is also 1 only these two things will give you 1 so this means that 1 is unit and minus 1 is also unit so z has how many units so what are the what are the units of z the units of z are only 1 and minus 1 how many elements two elements okay so this is uh, the in so i hope you understand the difference between what difference between unity and difference between unit what is unity unity means one okay an element such that a into one will give you a that element will be called as unity means that is the multiplicative identity the identity with respect to the multiplication operation that will be called as unity what is unit unit is something whose inverse we can find okay whose which inverse we can find whose multiplicative inverse we can find those people will be called as units okay uh, the next uh, definition that we want to give is what is a what is a division ring okay so if in a ring i understand that so let me write here what is a division ring if uh, every non-zero element okay take any non-zero element in the ring okay is unit then r is called division ring okay so you take a ring and and you find you pick up any non-zero element of that ring and if you come to know that it has multiplicative inverse it is unit means what it has multiplicative inverse then i will say that such a ring will become what such a ring will become division ring what is an example if i look at real numbers okay uh, what will happen to uh, with real numbers if you pay, take any non-zero real number okay can you find something so that its multiplication will be one yes you will say that i will have one upon a so this means that every non-zero element has what has multiplicative inverse that is every non-zero element is what will become a unit and therefore this definition is satisfied and this will conclude that the set of real numbers 
will become what will become a division ring okay is z a division ring is integers a division ring is this a division ring so what is the answer for this question you take two two is not unit two is not unit means there are elements in z which do not have multiplicative inverse this means that z is not a division ring okay and last but not the least is most important definition is of a is of a field if you have a division ring okay what is a field very important definition so let uh, let me say uh, let me write it like this a commutative a commutative division ring is called field okay we will see examples of all these things and just first i need these three definitions ready with my hand okay a commutative division ring will be called as a field so if you want to check that something is a field okay what is the first thing that you should do you should first check that is it a division ring what is the meaning of division ring that every non-zero element must have multiplicative inverse okay and not only that it should be commutative so if if i write down all the things that i need to check for a field okay first of all it should be a ring let me write one by one okay first of all it should be ring means the let me write f is a field okay f plus dot so firstly because it is a ring f plus must be abelian group because it is a ring f with respect to multiplication this closed clo it must be closed with respect to multiplication this is definition of ring i'm just writing the definition of ring okay third is what it is a closed and associative right means a dot b dot c is equal to a dot b dot c third thing is what distributivity must hold distributivity means hold means a into b plus c is equal to a into b plus a into c fourth it must be commutative means a dot b must be equal to b dot a for all a b in the field fifth it must be division ring means for every non-zero element the inverse must which inverse must exist the multiplicative inverse must exist okay one minute the multiplicative inverse must exist okay so these are all the things so first three things are telling you that it is a ring this part is telling you that it is a commutative ring and this part is telling you that it is a division ring right means every non-zero element must have a multiplicative inverse now let us see some problem so i hope now all the definitions are clear i have done the definitions of unit unity division ring and a field now let us slowly go one by one problem solving so that these things will get clearer so let me take up the first problem let me take this problem find the unity and units of z14 okay so what is the unity of z 14 so unity so what are the elements of z14 z14 contains of 0 bar 1 bar 2 bar up to 13 bar which element should i take here so that i will get the element back so this is the unity so who is the unity here here the unity is let me write unity as u unity is one bar okay so unity is one bar next what are your units of what are the units of z14 correct units of z14 which the, the, the what is the meaning of units of z14 
which elements which elements have inverse in z14 with respect to multiplication modulo 14 okay so you have to find all those elements which have multiplicative inverse now clearly if you see if you take one bar one bar into one bar will be one bar so this means one bar has inverse one bar so one bar is unit right suppose i take two bar now two bar should be multiplied by which number so that i will get one bar and if you carefully say uh, multiply two bar with one bar two bar with two bar two bar with three bar and if you multiply two bar with everything you will never get you will never get one bar okay i will come to that why you will never get one bar but if you take three bar if you multi what should i multiply to three bar so that uh, i will get one bar okay three bar if i multiply with uh, five bar so let me put a cross here okay three bar if i multiply by five bar then this three bar will have what this three bar will have multiplicative inverse five bar and this equivalently means that three bar is unit and not only that five bar is also unit because five has inverse one and three has inverse five so three bar and five bar are units now can you guess we don't want to waste much time in doing all the calculations because there are 14 elements in z14 so i don't have to waste my time in finding all those 14 elements so can you guess what problem comes if two bar is used and but three bar and five bar do not have that problem so that is clear, easy that if the number is relatively prime with 15 if the gcd is one then that a will become a unit okay so this means that i have to 15 14. 14 14 sorry okay if the so if the number is relatively prime with 14 then it will become what then it will become a unit so what are the units of uh, z14 now i can make a simple list it is one bar three bar five bar seven eight. seven is not working eight will not work nine will work yes then 10 is not going to work 11 will work 12 will have a problem and 13 so these are the units of z14 and what is the unity the unity means multiplicative identity was what unity was cu equal to one bar okay so this is how you find the units right now let us look at this problem what is the unity if it exists okay so unity need not exist we know that unity need not exist why am i writing if it exists because we know that 2z has no unity right so unity should exist first of all then i will find so find the unit of 2z cross z now this is answer is clear to you here that it does not exist such a unity does not exist because 2z has no unity so i, I cannot find the unity of 2z cross z so now we have to find the units of z z cross z z5 and z4 let us go on a new page so what are the units of first one who was the first one the first one was z so what are the units we know that units are only one and minus one remember these i'm not asking you unity i'm asking units means their inverses must exist what is what are the units of z cross z now can you make a guess what are the units of z cross z here you have one comma minus one here also you have two choices one comma minus one so what will be all the units if i start writing together what will be the units i will get how many units will i get i will get four pairs one one then one from this z and minus one from this z it's minus one and minus one from the first z one from the second z and minus one minus one all these elements will have inverses right we'll have inverses so let me just ask you one simple objective type of question what is the inverse of minus one minus one so whom should i multiply minus one minus one minus one comma minus one sorry whom should i multiply this so that i will get unity who is the unity of this ring the unity u is one comma one so what should i multiply here obviously i should multiply here by minus one minus, minus one. So, okay so this will be the 
inverse of that particular thing the next question is uh, what are the units of z5 okay now units of z5 again i am mean going to use the same logic who is relatively prime with 5 i know that 1 and 5 are relatively prime 2 and 5 are also relatively prime 3 5 is relatively prime and 4 and 5 are also relative so the gcd will become 1 so this means that the units of z5 will become all 1 bar 2 bar 3 bar and 4 bar 0 bar will not come okay so so what are the units of z5 in other words i'm trying to tell you that units of z5 are is z5 star means all non zero elements of z5 if i find the units of z4 that was the fourth part of our question what are the units of z4 now 1 and 4 are relatively prime and 3 and 4 are also relatively prime so this means that units of z4 will be equal to how much will be 1 bar and 3 bar so 2 bar and 0 bar will not come in this set okay now let us look at what are uh, the examples of fields and non examples of fields so i should be clear in my mind that what are fields and what all are not fields okay so what are examples of fields So as I told you, firstly, real numbers with respect to addition, with respect to multiplication is a field because why? Because firstly, you should check that is real numbers with respect to addition in abelian group. That is the first thing. Yes, it is an abelian group. Second, take all non-zero real numbers means take R star, non-zero real numbers. And with respect to the second operation, it must be closed it must be associative it must have uh, unity okay i'm writing unity also okay why it must have unity because we want units so units if you want units if you want a into b to be a one it must have unity so it must have unity and all all elements all non-zero elements will become units so this means that it is close associative identity is there inverse is there this means that r star is also a uh, group right because all four axioms are and and not only that a dot b must also equal to what b dot a so this means that r star dot is also which type of group is also an abelian group what is left if i want to declare that it is a field now so in general what i'm trying to tell you if you are given a ring with respect to two operation and if you want to show that it is a field okay what you have to do is you have to show that the ring the set with respect to first operation is abelian group the set non-zero elements of that set means r star with respect to the second operation that also must be abelian group means a dot b is equal to automatically commutativity comes here right a dot b is equal to b dot a means commutative thing comes here okay and what is the remaining now the connection between the two operations what is that connection distributivity is left so if you want to check whether a given set is a field or not you must first check that it is closed with respect to it is abelian group with respect to the first operation ring star means not usme se zero nikal do that must be abelian group with respect to the second operation and distributivity if you check these three things it will automatically become a field so clearly real numbers satisfy all these properties and therefore this will be a first example of the field the second example of field is rational numbers with respect to multiplication this also satisfies all the properties because q plus is abelian group q star dot is also abelian group so both these are abelian uh, and uh, distributivity obviously holds the third important field is like you know it's some brahma vishnu mahesh it's these are the three gods of ring theory okay real numbers rational numbers and complex numbers so these this is also going to form a field okay so these important three fields one must know but the point is that all these three fields are which type of fields they are all they're all finite uh, the, they're all infinite fields so can it happen that a finite thing can happen to be a field so what is an example of, of a finite field 
finite fields are very important in the study of computer science okay so that is why computer science people worry about finite fields so take any zp take any zp obviously by addition modulo p and multiplication modulo p in your group theory classes you have proved that zp addition modulo p is an abelian group you have also proved that if you take zp star if you remove the zero and if you take multi multiplication modulo p that is also a group and third is distributivity is also true a bar multiplication modulo p b bar plus c bar will be equal to a bar dot cross b bar plus a bar times c bar multiplication modulo p modulo p multiple addition modulo so this also holds and therefore this is the first finite field with how many elements with p elements okay in general i will tell you this result this might be useful for your objective types of questions okay in general if you take any p raised to k format of number okay where k is greater than or equal to 1 okay it means uh, 3 square 5 cube 7 raised to 4 anything okay but the base must be the prime number and index is any non negative positive integer okay so it is a positive integer then you take any type of number so this is 9 this is 125 this is whatever says 49 into 49 okay so you can always find a field there exists a field with p raised to k elements okay this is a very important result right so what type of question i expect if i know that these two things okay uh, suppose i try to question that which of the following cannot be order of a field which of the following cannot be order of the field first is 81 then second is say 343 the third is say 200 and the fourth is say 125 you see now clearly the answer will become 200 because 81 is 3 raised to something right 343 is what 7 power something and 125 is 5 ka some power but 200 is not a single prime number raised to something it is 200 is multiplication of prime numbers and their powers okay so 200 cannot be written in the form of what p raised to k so you cannot find a field with how many elements with field 200 elements okay can you find a field of seven elements uh, yes i can find a field of seven elements because the previous result we have proved that zp is always a field means means what is the field with seven elements that field must be what that field must be z7 that is why i didn't take any prime number in this list because you know that by by previous result that if you take any prime number then there will be always a field of those many elements and that field will be what that field will be zp okay so these are examples of fields now can we find some other examples uh, some exa some rings which are not fields okay that is also important for us so what are the things which are not fields so i mean why this is important suppose i give you a list of four fields which of these is not a field then that also you should know if, right so what is the first simplest example the very fa famous example that we all like is our set of integers unfortunately failed to become a field because z plus is a group this is an abelian group no problem right but what happens to z star z star with respect to multiplication is not a group forget about abelian and whatever okay so this is not a group because you cannot find the multiplicative inverse of many elements right so the first uh, out person is a uh, is our integers then what if i take any zmn if i take composite numbers zmn then again it is going to be not become a field because if it's a prime number it is going to become a field means indirectly i'm trying to tell you that if it is not a prime number then some problem might occur okay but that number has to be what that uh, that number will have some problems later on okay i mean uh, suppose i say what is uh, what is z200 okay now uh, z200 cannot be a field okay so the, because this is which type of a number because this is a composite type of a number right 
uh, if i go to the previous objective exercise looking at this exercise okay the previous objective for question was saying what now 200 cannot be, be a order of some field but then how 81 can become an order of some field because 81 is a composite number right so so this so this is telling me that z81 because 81 is composite number z81 is not a field okay and my previous uh, exercise is telling me that what my previous exercise is telling me that there is a field of 81 or a field of 81 elements okay that field need not be necessarily z z81 so people have found out a field with 81 elements okay which is different from z81 okay so z81 is a person which will not be a field but then we know that there is one field which will be of order 81 so who is that field currently we don't know who is that field but there is one field sitting somewhere with 81 elements okay which is different from what which is different from z81 because z81 is not a field okay so we must know examples which are not fields also right so what if i look at uh, this particular set okay so one question let me write it here one of the famous uh, thing is that what is the definition of uh, field so look at the definition of a field okay note let me write a note instead so what is a field was a, a commutative division ring is a field so if i remove the commutativeness if i remove the commutativeness this means that uh, division ring with commutativity if i have a division ring with commutativity then it will be a what then it will be a field so if i remove commutativeness what will happen why does this does this division ring does not become a field okay i mean i mean to say that we have to find one example that it is uh, of a ring that that ring must be a division ring first of all but it is not a field so this must this works as a counter example that this so i have a division ring in my mind which is not a field means where must be the problem means that division ring could not become a field means the problem must be that the division ring in my mind is not commutative because if it was commutative then it would have become a field so who is that division ring which is not a field so this often this example is a very famous example we should know so that is called as uh, the quaternions so let me write that ring here plus minus one plus minus i plus minus j and plus minus k okay i'm not going to discuss this ring here okay in details in some other lectures i will i will discuss about this ring of quaternions okay so it is ring of quaternions how many elements are there in this ring with eight elements okay so this is a ring which is division ring what is the meaning of division ring every non-zero element will have inverse but the problem is that this ring of quaternions is not a commutative ring okay q8 is not commutative i will not go into the the details of what is what are the elements i will just tell you one hint that i into j will come out to be k but if you take j into i it comes out to be minus k this means that ij is not equal to ji so this means that it is not commutative but q8 is what but q8 is division ring and it is non-commutative so this conclusion tells me that q8 is not a is not a field so this example you have to just remember okay do you know a division ring which is not a field so that example is q8 okay every field is also a ring so this is what this is obviously this is obviously true because every field is division ring every field is a commutative ring but the converse is not true every ring is not a field that example i told you that z is ring but it is not a field so this is true right second is every ring has a multiplicative identity so example is what 2z is a problematic ring right 
टू जेड में क्या प्रॉब्लम है नॉट हैविंग मल्टीप्लीकेटिव आइडेंटिटी वन विद इट सो दिस स्टेटमेंट विल बिकम फॉल्स नेक्स्ट मल्टीप्लीकेशन इन अ फील्ड इज कॉम्यूटेटिव इज दिस करेक्ट बिकॉज फील्ड का डेफिनेशन इट सेल्फ टेल्स इज दैट it is a commutative division ring so field has to be commutative right so uh, so this is obviously true by definition itself next addition in every ring is commutative addition in every ring is commutative correct is it okay yes this is because uh, in a ring it has to be a abelian group so it has to be true every element in a ring has additive inverse yes because it's a group it must be having every element must have added additive inverse because we know that r plus always forms a forms a group so it must be having an additive inverse what about the last one distributivity laws for a ring are not very important okay for a ring distributivity laws are not very important this obviously has to be false because if they were not very important we would not have included them in the definition of the ring isn't it since we have included these definitions in our ring means obviously they have to be uh, very important in the study of rings okay so we have discussed uh, this in the fields and non examples now let us look at the ring which is z root 2 this is going to be a very important example in our future lectures okay so that is why you must know the background about this particular ring so what is z root 2 i am going to collect all uh, elements of the form a plus b root 2 where a and b are what where a and b are allowed to be integers okay then if i uh, if if i check the addition operation if if i check z root 2 with respect to addition then no, there will be no problem it will automatically become a group not only group it will become an abelian group so it will have no issues okay associativity with respect to multiplication closure with respect to multiplication okay uh, with respect to multiplication also will have no problem so they will also have a tick distributivity will also be uh, be cl clear when i take three elements and i do a into b plus c and that also will be true for such type of elements okay so everything will go fine right the question is that is this particular set is this set is it a division ring is is that a division ring so what is the meaning of division ring everybody knows that if you take any non zero element suppose i take a non zero element 2 plus uh, 3 uh, 2 plus uh, let me take 3 plus root 2 okay i it must be format of what a plus b root 2 right so let me take 2 plus uh, 3 root 2 can i find some element okay uh, c plus d root 2 so that its answer will become 1 plus 0 root 2 because this is the unity of that particular uh, ring okay so can i find a number here c plus 0 root 2 such that this into this will be equal to 1 it is equivalently saying that 2 plus 3 root 2 multiplied by c plus d root 2 is 1 and therefore c plus d root 2 has to be equal to 1 upon 2 plus 3 root 2 okay and if i rationalize it to minus 3 root 2 and 2 minus 3 root 2 so this means that c plus d root 2 will be equal to 2 minus 3 root 2 upon 2 a, a plus b a minus b will become 4 minus 3 square into 2 okay so this means that it is 2 upon something minus 3 upon something root 2 this person does not belong to z root 2 because these two entries are not rational numbers this means that 2 plus 3 root 2 is not a unit if it is not a unit this means that z root 2 cannot become a division ring so z root 2 with respect to usual addition and usual multiplication is not a division ring if it is not a division ring obviously it is not a field because for field it should have been what it should have been a division ring so z root 2 is one of one more example which will be not a 
field okay the next example is uh, one of the most important examples in field theory okay that q root 2 if instead of integers if now i take rational numbers and if i do the same thing now that thing 100% will become a field so if i just change here q okay just observe the changes okay this will become q root a when b belong to this then we know that q with respect root 2 with respect to addition is abelian closure distributivity everything will hold what problem came here here if i take a non zero element 2 plus 3 root 2 and if i multiply with something will it be a unit yes now because all these computations tell us that 2 upon something and 3 upon something these two are which type of numbers these are rational numbers and therefore this will belong to q root 2 so yes so every element if i pick if i pick any element i'm sorry if i pick any element like 2 plus 3 root 2 the inverse of that element will be c plus d root 2 which i will find by this method okay and therefore what will happen all the elements of uh, q root 2 will become what will become units and therefore q root 2 will now become a division ring the only problem is that before declaring whether it is a field or not a field i have to show that what is the i hope you remember the definition of division ring it must be commutative also right so is it commutative if i multiply a plus b root 2 by c plus d root 2 will i get the same answer as c plus d root 2 multiplied by a plus b root 2 the answer is yes so it is commutative therefore q root 2 becomes a division ring and it is commutative and therefore i can now declare that q root 2 is a field so now why q why this example is so important i hope you now understand that up to now we knew only three fields which were infinite what were the three fields i told you one is real numbers one is rational numbers one is complex numbers how many finite fields you know all zps are finite fields and any field whose order is what of the form p raised to k okay if you take any set uh, if you take any number of the form if you take any number of the form p raised to k then obviously there will be some field so all these are finite finite fields that i knew were only three and now we have entered one more field in this list and that is what that field is q root 2 then you understand that if q root 2 can become a field why q root 3 can will have a problem so q root 3 will also become a field in general i'm trying to tell you that q root p if you take any prime number that will also become a field and therefore you have now infinite number of infinite fields okay all the fields are infinite with infinite elements and how many such fields could you find you could find infinite such fields how many finite fields can you find you can find infinite fields okay with this we will stop in this lecture